A host of antiquity sites have been uncovered within Chinese territory. Coal deposits have been spotted lurking not far beyond its borders. And uh, I think the mods are mostly working. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Civilization VI in Series 3 of our Controlled Chaos Meta Series, Empire of Espionage. So I have... There's not a lot that you can do once you have a save file going in Civ 6 to change the situation with the mods. But I've noticed that while the list of mods that are shown as in use here is not complete, like not everything is here that should be, some of the important ones like remove GDR are. So I'm going to roll with just the changes to the modding, however they happened. I don't know how they happened, and we'll see if we can head them off before the beginning of the next series, because that's pretty much the only opportunity to do so. Having established that, let's jump in and see what decisions we need to make here. So we can research the scientific theory, military science, ballistics, or steam power technology. Scientific theory would be done fastest and would give me additional food from plantations. Military science would give me better infantry and cavalry units if I needed it. Also, steam power would give us access to the canal and let us build railroads. I'm kind of tempted just to lean steam power for now because we don't really have a military threat on our hands. And I'm, I'm just feeling comfortable. I'm going to send this builder here to improve that coal. And as I recall, is that the only coal in my territory? I think it might be. Yeah, we had that niter there. And this city is quite possibly about to fall to loyalty pressure, especially once Longxi grows a little bit more. So that's an interesting development. Let's see what we can do civic-wise. Yep, I'll go for opera and ballet. It'll be done a little bit faster than the other technologies on the board. Meanwhile, this skirmisher is just looking around for whatever it might be able to discover. And I've just realized that one thing I might need to be mindful of since I'm not running the mods, I might not have highlights showing the goody huts. Yeah, there's no highlighting of the, goody, of the uh, goody huts, so I have to be a little bit more vanilla in my thinking. In the base game of Civ 6, you just have to kind of spot them when they arrive, when there's a notification, and then you have to remember where they are or search for them which is now a function. It wasn't always a possibility to search for them, but you can now. All right, we've explored everywhere we can up here. Let's go ahead and get this skirmisher ready to get back in the water. And meanwhile, we can look into, oh, there's a barbarian encampment that is about to become a city-state right here. And there's some coal immediately south of Canada. That's interesting. All right. Those fishing boats near Zhaodong have been improved. <laughs> the drought in Zhaodong finally ended. Just a brutally oppressive drought that kept the city from growing and actually had the city's population struggling. It didn't actually drop, I don't think, but it was headed that way. So I'm grateful that that drought is at an end. Moderate flood. <laughs> Alright, so we can't actually see the flood, but there's been a flood here. Very common issue with later game Civ 6 is that the graphics, for whatever reason, don't always update as you would expect in various situations. Specifically the environmental graphics. Okay, so... This builder, what can I do with you? I can put a mine there. Why don't we do that? We're building the Mausoleum Halicarnassus. It's going to take eight more turns. We had an interesting situation with the Mausoleum last episode because I consumed some rock, literally destroyed a stone deposit in order to generate lots of extra production, and it did exactly nothing. We've met the Preslav city-state. Uh, excuse me? Oh, okay, so they've got a galley here. 
So where actually are they? Ah, they're out here in the water. All right, speaking of that, we might have some envoys. Is anyone else influencing Auckland yet? No. Most civilizations don't even seem to know Auckland exists. <laughs> so if we became suzerain of Johannesburg, which we could right now, we would get era score and cities would receive plus one production for every improved resource type. After researching industrialization, it becomes plus two production. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just do that. And then also, if I put one more envoy in Samarkand, we should get more gold per turn. Yep, there it is. Plus two era score. And we have met the Arma city-state, and we're the first ones to meet them, so we've earned an envoy there. That's additional faith per turn. We are doing just fine, by the way, on faith per turn. That's one thing that's been, like, shocking for the last little while. We just have so much coming in. 117, and really nothing to spend it on at the moment, because we don't have a religious threat that we're worried about. So that's been fantastic. No other upgrades I can do at the moment. I don't have much of a military. Welcome to the United States. Well, well, well. You conduct yourself well. You can consider us friends. Anything's better than Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Those are words that I never thought would come out of my mouth. But after what he did, what he put me through in the last series, anything is better than Abraham Lincoln. All right, so let's go to the next turn. We might be able to do some trading with him. Your embassy is a welcome addition to our capital. On you, I see the mark of evil. Okay, well, he must follow a different secret society. Yeah, he follows the Hermetic Order. Welp. Opera is when a guy gets stabbed in the back and instead of bleeding, he sings. Okay, so let's check out... Well, first of all, we have some embassy opportunities. They're not interested. Leo is fine with it. Teddy's not interested. Google Khan's cool with it. Germany, not interested. There we go. And we got an embassy with our friends, the Aztec, which is still such a strange thing to say. Trade-wise, what do we got? Okay, we don't actually have anything we can trade, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Okay, so this city is now set to rebel in 10 turns. Jean and Longxi are not going to grow anymore before that amount of time has passed. Although that's a five citizen city, so the likelihood that it will grow is pretty high. All right, we're going to get this Inquisitor up to Longxi and clear that city. do a bank in Xiaodong, or maybe, hang on. Would we benefit from another campus? Maybe not in Xiaodong. I think there's a clear opportunity to improve that industrial zone in Xi'an. And yeah, we'll go ahead and build this university in Handan. We have two more envoys available. That's a bit of a surprise. I'm going to go ahead and put them in Buenos Aires because that will actually give us additional production in a number of cities. Right, and we are now bringing in coal per turn, or we will be next turn anyway. Let's get that builder back to Beijing. Now this trader, which remember was pillaged previously, we can now set them up to once again trade with Shendu. And now Jean might grow a little bit sooner. Not soon enough though. The city's going to rebel in 10 turns.
I've got enough gold that I could purchase the tiles that I need to, pr to purchase in order to get that fish for Handan. Let's go ahead and do that because we need that city to grow a little faster. Let's get that skirmisher back in the water. This caravel can head down that direction. We might be about to circumnavigate the globe. Just saying. We're getting real, real close. Oh, nice. So we have some barbarian privateers and a frigate nearby. That's not good for the caravel, especially on this difficulty. So we'll have to see how this goes. Your embassy is a welcome addition to our capital, Canada. The high hills are mine by right and custom. You are better off settling elsewhere. All right. America is bitter that we're in a golden age. Oh, we've sat we have satisfied Money Grubber, which is Kublai Khan's special agenda. Six turns until the Taj Mahal is done in Shendu. I'm really hopeful that we pull that off. Not guaranteed, but it's feeling close. Now, remind me what I've got in terms of encampment district so far. I've got a barracks here, right? So I think up here what I'd rather do is build the stable and let's, just to be on the safe side, let's go ahead and build medieval walls. And then we'll do a lighthouse in Taiwan. I had a community regular point out to me that Taiwan is actually a city on the Chinese mainland. So this is not, even though the spelling is similar, I understand Taiwan is spelled T-A-I-W-A-N. But when I saw this, I assumed maybe it was just a different spelling and it was a reference to like the original, you know, kind of founding state or city-state even of Taiwan. But not the case, evidently. So Druid, I appreciate the heads up on that because it, I just sort of concluded when I saw Taiwan that that was in fact Taiwan. My mistake. At least that makes it somewhat less awkward. All right, I'm going to keep this skirmisher here until we've dealt with these galleys. That'll give that caravel some good experience, though. This has been a really fascinating series so far in that... There just isn't a lot going on militarily. We haven't had that major threat. We've been closed off geographically, and the closest neighbor that we have is actually our friend and likes us a good bit. Which I just don't know to I don't know what to do with myself. Oh look who wants coal. Ah <laughs> no. No. That's a negative. No coal for you. No coal for you. They're gonna keep coming in. Uh, you know what? Let's just get him to stop asking. I'm not interested in a friendship. A joint war against Menelik. New. No. We are not going to go to war against Ethiopia. We have no reason to. Again, we're going to win by spying. Okay. This is what I was afraid of. Our caravels are going to get hit hard by these barbarians. We might have to back off here. I was just about to circumnavigate with this unit, and uh, now I have to run the heck away so as not to lose said caravel. Sad day. Okay, let's get this builder back in Handan. Makes me sad not to be able to see my charge information, because that mod deloaded somehow. Interesting. Six gold per turn and the Iliad great work. You just want me to open my borders, give you six coal, and 30 diplomatic favor. You know what? You know what? I will take that, Lady Six guy. I will take that. You're going to give me your great works. Let's go. Send envoy. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and become suzerain of Antananarivo, which we will get era score for that, by the way. And if you missed what their bonus is, your civilization gains plus two culture, 
for each great person it has ever earned up to a total of 30% maximum. Not bad at all, dare I say. We need to get this caravel back home. It's a shame. But there's no way for it to heal until it's in friendlier waters. What's this? Another moderate flood that we cannot see. Science owes more to the steam engine than the steam engine owes to science. Okay, so now we can upgrade those caravels to ironclads, which we might well do. We can build railroads, and we have access to canals, which means Jadong can finally get outside. Growth of urban concentrations that led to a sense of anonymity. Although it can't really do much with that right now because it's like its waterways are encased by ice. That's a bit of a problem. All right, 50% gold and resource discount on unit upgrades. Or do we go with military academies, seaports, and renaissance walls generate plus two science? Hmm? Seems like that's probably the best idea. And now we're up to 142 science per turn, which is competitive when you look at the grand scheme. I'm liking that. Okay, let's give this caravel additional combat strength. If you're going to be out there fighting... I want you to be able to hold your own. I'm a little bit nervous about that caravel being close to land, but I think they'll be fine. I'm going to go for... You know what? Let's do scientific theory. I'm sticking to the peaceful technologies. We're going to lean that direction because I'm kind of trusting at this point that things are going to stay relatively calm on the military front. Okay, let's build Renaissance Wall so we get that science bonus there. A couple of good spots for a campus district here in Guangzhou. Already have the harbor built. I think at this point what I would like to do here can buy a builder outright let's just do that and we have room for a trader so i'm going to go ahead and build one because we need to make sure that city is growing okay i have the ability to train additional spies let's do let's work on the walls in taiwan taiwan perhaps now that i know that's strictly not actually taiwan All right, we can't actually get past these units blowing to Buenos Aires right now, but that will hopefully not be the case for much longer. Ethiopia is founding a number of new cities. We may be able to colonize out here. Might be beneficial to do so. Also, I see some goody huts down here. What's this? Ah... So we were the first major civilization to meet Hattusa, which makes no sense whatsoever because they're right next to Canada, but the game gave it to us. So we actually got the bonus envoy, and they're a science city-state, so that's helpful to us. Also, are we in countdown? We are in countdown. We just hit countdown, and we still need to earn 10 or 8. Not 10, but 8 error score. That's problematic. Okay, well, I can start building the coal power plant in Xi'an, and that may help. Hmm, this is a little bit problematic. I don't know exactly where the air is. Well, the Taj Mahal will finish, and that might give me most of what I need, but I don't know how I'm going to get the rest of it. So let's build the medieval walls in Taiwan. Okay, we're going to get that coffee improved, and that'll be somewhat helpful. Although I need to double check... Okay, there's nothing else I can trade at the moment. Amenities-wise, how are we doing? 
We still seem to be fine. Housing-wise, we're not great, but amenities-wise, we're okay. Oh, the mausoleum at Halicarnassus is also one turn away from completion. Never mind, we're fine. <laughs> we are not going to have a Dark Age. And now that we've got the Taj Mahal completed, that's going to make it even harder to sink into a Dark Age in the future. Love it. That's also going to be really good for Beijing in general. Potala Palace has been built by Menelik. That's unfortunate. Also, we have an Egyptian apostle just kind of hanging out in the middle of our territory. Did you ever build a castle in the air? Yes. Here is one. Brought down to earth and fixed for the wonder of ages. That's kind of a big deal. So remember that the Taj Mahal, when you build it, provides additional era score on top of whatever else might earn era score. In Halicarnassus, of such dimensions, of such exquisite beauty, as no other shade can boast. If facts don't fit the theory, change the facts. Okay, and that secured our normal age. Let us renew that monitoring mission for our main spy. And we're about to have additional spies in the coming turns that will further help with that. How am I doing on coal? In two turns, that coal power plant will be done. The starting of those coal power plants should provide era score, I think. All right, so I'm going to do the armory first in Beijing there. We're going to improve that coffee. And we have the opportunity to start an industry around coffee specifically. Going to work to clear these waters of barbarian threats. Although I may be able to sneak these skirmishers past without them getting hurt. Maybe. I think we'll finally be able to train those second spies starting now. Friendship or scorched earth. That's a bit of a dichotomy there. Civil engineering. Mm. I like the extra governor title, so let's go for that. And choose production. Yeah, we need to train archaeologists as well. Those we can buy with gold, though. Spies, we cannot. It's really going to take nine turns. I'm going to train a builder in Zhaodan, and when we finish in Shendu, we're going to train a spy there. It'll be done sooner in the grand scheme. So I could put an industrial zone there, and that may actually be quite good. Given that we don't have a lot of production opportunities in that particular city. Okay, we're going to build the armory in Lanshi, and now if we were to train a spy here, it would take eight turns. Perfect. That's the city where I want that to happen. Now we are going to become suzerain of Hattusa. And we will have two of each strategic resource per turn that you have revealed, but not improved. So notice that we got three, not two, but three era score for that. That is specifically because of the Taj Mahal. already helping us out, and our current era is not even over yet. We've got eight turns. Tlacopan is going to rebel in one turn, and then we might very well get that city. I'm going to build an industry here over this coffee. So Guangzhou is now the home of a coffee company.
All right, let's very carefully do this. I just want to be able to see anything that might come at me here. And this is where the new encampment is. Hmm. We might have to just raid that from the coast. We only need eight more era score. Oh, really? You want a joint war against Hungary? That's a negative, Cleo. We don't like you. We've been over this. The power plant is about to come online. Black Lepon has rebelled. Surging machinery and billowing smoke mark the start of our power generation. So, that's three more air score, and now we need one more. One more, and we still have seven turns to do it. So, just a few turns ago, I was genuinely concerned about where that extra air score was going to come from. Now, everything is fine. We're going to, you know what, let's go ahead and just become, let's say, military allies. With the Aztec. How about that? And then let's take a look at our trade opportunities because I recall at least one of these. Was it Cleo when I met her? I mean, she definitely has... Uh, I've got some of those things already, though. It's not really worth it to go for those. Was it Kublai Khan? It, no, it wasn't Kublai Khan. I think it was Germany. Yeah, Germany had a number of extra resources, and I think I'm still trading with them. Now let's say incense. Perfect. We can nix the one-time deal. That'll make it a little bit sweeter for her. And now we have two more luxury resources coming in each turn to help ensure that we have the amenities we need, slash want, slash demand. Because we're about to be a thriving modern society with glowing green obelisks in all of our cities. I'm going to train a spy in Jean as well. It's really time that we lean into this hard. It's probably past time but we need to get those trained. I've wanted to make sure that other infrastructure was in place, but I think we're there. I think we're more or less there. Especially now that I'm being, feeling a little bit less confused about the modding situation. Looks like we're able to get the skirmishers down here, which is great because there's some goody huts to be found. A number of goody huts, in fact. And I think we can also... I'm going to try to colonize this. If I have an opportunity to train a bunch of settlers after the spies are in place, that's what I'm going to go for. Yervin has made peace with Kublai Khan. Okay, the industrial era ends in six turns. Can I train one more spy? Yes, I can. Give me all the spies, please and thanks. Okay, good. That's all the spies. All right, now the trader has finished in Guangzhou, so we want to trade with Shendu and begin that route. That honestly should have been set up a while ago. Let's go for the shipyard. Now, if I can't get the error score with anything else, how many... Let me see how many turns I have here. Six turns. Yeah, I want you to just book it toward Hondan and see if we can get that caravel in... Actually, wait. Hold up. Just kidding. Just kidding. I forgot that one was already back home. So let's cancel and we can take that back soon enough. All right, we've got these scouts on land. Friendship with Montezuma has expired. I know that. Question is, how close is this city to rebelling? It's rebelling in 95 turns. Wow. That's 
that's a long time. That's an unfortunately long time. But we do have a golden age. So, you know, consider blessings counted. We are defined by how we live with our surroundings. Remember that. Okay, Teddy. Whatever you say, Teddy. Science-wise, doesn't no seem like anyone is in science victory territory. Remember. No one in his senses ought to do so. Without first being clear in his mind what he intends to achieve by that war and how he intends to conduct it. Improvement makes straight roads, but the crooked roads without improvement are roads of genius. So at this point... Yeah, I am still building Renaissance walls, so I want the production towards defensive buildings bonus to stay in place. but we might be able to institute some better policies in the coming turns. Let's go for ballistics. Ooh, economics. If we could get Big Ben, that would be a lovely thing. Archaeologist time? Probably. Is there an argument for anything else first? Nope, probably not. Let's, well, wonder-wise, Xiaodong is one of the cities that could definitely have a wonder. Let's get that tobacco improved. All right, Beijing, you're still building walls. Although, if I went for the military academy, that would be good in terms of production and science. But let's do that first. Governor title. Now I can unlock the Void, Sing the Void, Void Singer's next technology, which is unlocked in the industrial era, unlocks the cultist unit. This unit is purchased with faith. Hey, and uses charges to reduce loyalty in foreign cities and generate relics of the void. <laughs> oh, really? Reduces loyalty in foreign cities. How perfect. How utterly perfect in every way. Excuse me while I use my abundance of faith to train every cultist I possibly can. I'm going to hold off on upgrading that unit because I feel like I might get some error score for it, and I'd prefer to save that for the next episode. Not just for the next episode, but for the next era itself. Look at all those cultists. Oh, that's fantastic. You are about to have problems. So we should be able to secure the loyalty of that city now, I would think. But I haven't messed around with the Void Singers before, so we'll have to see how this goes. Nice. Governor title and... A promotion for that skirmisher, which is quite nice. Any other goody huts here? Yeah, right there. We have another governor title that we've just unlocked. Let's go ahead and give Magnus the increase to power provided by each resource of the coal power plant. And it also increases the production of those power plants by two. But that's only in the capital, and we don't actually have an industrial zone there. So, actually, wait. I'm going to take a closer look at that policy. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know why it's never occurred to me before that that's only viable for Magnus when there's an industrial zone in the capital. But currently, there's not an industrial zone. So, that's my bad. I will have to make sure that I pay more attention to that in the future. As much as I play Civilization VI, that little detail has managed to escape my attention for a long time, until just now. I was like, wait. All right, so 15 gold for 30 turns, two great works. You want the art of war. You want coal. You want citrus. I'm not going to give you the art of war. Oh, nice. Okay, I'll tell you what. Makes the one-time deal. Give me those two great works. We'll accept that deal. Nice doing business with you. <laughs> Surely you cannot believe in nothing. Oh, we don't believe in nothing. Trust me. All right, so the spies are four, five, six turns away. Teddy Roosevelt was ravaged by a natural disaster. You know what? Sure. Let's support him. Let's join that because that could be a way to earn some additional diplomatic victory points. 
It looks like just us and Kublai Khan. Hasagawa Tohaku has been earned as a great artist. This Caravel just gained additional combat strength when defending versus ranged attacks. And of course, gained some additional health. Just going for basic production, just like one Envoy bonuses, particularly in terms of culture and unit production through military city-states. Okay, we're about 36 minutes into the episode. It's 1610 AD, turn 152. I'm going to go ahead and stop this one here. In the next one, we're going <laughs> to we're going to send the cultists in and have a blast. We're also going to send the spies in. So I think the um, the Empire of Espionage is about to kick into high gear within the next, I would say... 30 minutes of gameplay or so maybe even less because when you keep when you keep in mind that these renaissance walls are almost done i might be able to train another spy once i unlock a policy that will let me do so we're gonna have these spies running around taking everything that they possibly can and i've already got a spy in place that is helping my future spies be more powerful and helping to prevent enemy spy missions from being successful within my territory. So for now, I'll stop this one here, and the next one we'll see what we can do to actually secure Tlacopan's loyalty. It's hard to pronounce. And, um... It's a little bit mind-bending, isn't it? Just how peaceful this series has been so far. I'm so accustomed to like thinking in terms of, okay, militarily, what am I going to need to prepare for next turn? And so far, that just hasn't really been a factor whatsoever. It's messing with my head a little bit, but it's fun because it's a change of pace. And we have, like I said, a spy victory on our hands if we can manage these cultists and our upcoming spies as effectively as possible. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If it's not your first time or even your second, look for the join button to access unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes are coming out every day but Monday at 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.